Welcome back to the London Free Press Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. We are streaming on all of the major platforms and of course over at lfpress.com. I'm your host, Lindsay Barnett, and it's been a little bit since I've spoken with London Free Press court reporter and columnist Jane Sims. Jane, how are you doing today? I'm great, Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to catch up. We always have such good chats and they tend to surround the pandemic. And it's been a few weeks since this podcast has even touched on the pandemic because there's been so many other things happening within the city. And that reminds me, if you are missing out on anything going on, if you're a little crazy, like I'm a mom of a three-month-old, lfpress.com, you can catch up on the go. It's a lifesaver. So any major news stories are happening there. Um, but we, we need to talk about the pandemic because I had an interesting discussion with somebody yesterday and they said to me, is the pandemic over? I kind of think it is. And I thought, interesting take. My life has changed a lot in the last few weeks, as I think a lot of people have based on the province. We're seeing a lot of restrictions being eased. Do you think that we're kind of like in the clear, is life going back to normal, in your opinion? Sort of. <laughs> is that a good answer? Um, I, I think I'm going to go back to something that Dr. Mackey and Dr. Summers at the health unit have said a lot of the time. What they've said is this has become the pandemic of the unvaccinated. And it's true. If we look at the numbers and we see where the case counts are, and generally who was hospitalized, and unfortunately who is becoming deathly ill in, uh, from COVID-19, it's people who haven't had shots. And, you know, I think at this point that we have gotten over the hump of, of mandates. We understand that mandates work, and they do, honestly. Look at, look at, uh, at what's happened. It's, that's why people are thinking it's over. And I'll even look last week at last week's vaccination numbers here in Middlesex, London. I mean, we have, we've done enormously well. We're not quite at 90% for first shots, but we're really darn close, right? And, and our second shots, we're up to, I'm just going to look at my numbers here. What did I say? Um, 85, sorry. Two shots, 85.6%. Fantastic. Great work. But there's still, we're still not at that 90% that we want to be at. Um, and to get those people, it's been really hard. But funny enough, I looked at the numbers for this week, and it turns out like Middlesex London gave up almost 5,000 more shots this past week. That's fantastic. And that edges us closer all the time. One of the other hubs we have, though, and this is going to be a big issue when it happens, is that we still have a lot of little kids who are protected. And I think that there is a lesson that we can learn right now from what happened in Lucan over the past week. We're at Wilberforce School, where right now I think today uh, the, the health unit listed 12 cases, which is a big number of kids. And it just tells you that they're vulnerable. So I think once we start getting kids vaccinated um, and we start seeing people take their kids to get vaccinated, because we're gonna have a fight about that as well, um, I, I think that a lot of us might start thinking, okay, now we can uncross the fingers and yeah, maybe say that, you know, there is, that this is reaching an, an end point. But I want to say one, one, other, one other thing too. Dr. Karen Moore, Ontario's top doctor said yesterday and in, in a press conference, he basically made it clear that this is not going away, that this is, that COVID-19 is like that squatter that won't leave the house and it's not going to leave the house. We're going to have to kind of figure out a way to live with at least traces of it. And that's going to mean understanding that we're going to need boosters, that we're going to need to do all the things and follow the science and, and make sure that, that it's not being transmitted throughout the community because it's still out there. It really is. You made so many interesting points. And I, I know Dr. Chris Mackey and Dr. Summers have said this really is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. But when you do look at the daily case counts and granted, People that are fully vaxxed are dying at a significantly lower rate than the unvaxxed, um, but there's still a lot of people catching it. And so I know I've had conversations with loved ones, family and friends that I think it's going to kind of become like the seasonal flu that, as you mentioned, it's here to stay. I think it's maybe a matter of time until we all get it. It's just a 
how severe we are going to catch it. Now, Ontario has announced that they are changing um, boosters and opening it up to more people starting on Friday, I believe. And we're going to see that progress, which I think is fantastic. And I know for me personally, this past week, I went back to my yoga class and that was a huge step for me, like truly. Um, and again, though, my, my baby's three months, I do not have school aged children and you're right. I think that there is going to be a bigger discussion. We know prime minister, Justin Trudeau has purchased, I think like 5.3 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine for when health Canada approves Pfizer for that age gap of five to 11. Um, I, I just, I don't know what the answer is here. It, it seems like the province though has really Overnight, I feel like I blinked. It went from all of these heavy mandates to all of a sudden Premier Doug Ford saying, mm, well, come early next year, I'm going to lift the mask mandate and you're not going to need proof of vax to go anywhere. What kind of implications do you think that we're going to see from that? I think we were, quite frankly, and I say this as a columnist, I think we're mixing too much politics with, with reality. Uh, you know, we have an election coming in June and I can't help but think that some of this stuff is, is election related. Um, you know, what I'm writing about today, I'm going to write about Premier Ford's decision not to mandate vaccinations for healthcare workers, which is causing all kinds of ripples throughout the province. Um, here in London, we know that, that LHSC and St. Joe's put a policy in, and I think we're all very grateful for that policy, given that we, especially that we're a huge regional hospital and people want to feel safe when they go there. But the problem is now, because the case counts are now ticking down, and the politics is starting to ratchet up. And my fear is, is that we're going to get caught in that little matrix of what's, what's right and what's wrong here, um, what's truth and what's fiction. Uh, it's fine and good for the government to say that they're going to get rid of the mask mandate and on X, X day. But by doing so, you, are, you may be creating a false hope that everything's going to be hunky-dory, tickety-boo on a particular date. And I don't think that's how it's going to work. I mean, I already have family members saying to me, and I'm the same way, I think I'll still wear a mask, particularly in the uh, winter. Um, I was never a flu shot person, I'll admit that, but I'm getting my flu shots now. Um, I think that we have had a, a change in culture regarding public health protocols in terms of, you know, we used to say, ah, it's just a cold. We're not going to see it that way anymore. But I, I do have an issue at this point where we're trying to score political points on the backs of people who may become sick. So I don't think... COVID-19 is not a politician, it's a virus. And it's, it's, it's not going to, to uh, be swayed by one side or the other, it's just gonna do what it's gonna do. And we have to move as a community and as a province to make sure it doesn't move into a spot that is, that is gonna take us down again. I'm glad that you said that. And we've, we've learned a lot from our neighbors south of the border with regards to the pandemic. And I don't know why masks became such a political thing because truly they shouldn't be. You look at Asian countries and for years, anybody who is sick has had a mask on. I was in China a couple of years ago riding the subway and it's no big deal. It's commonplace for them. You're not feeling well, you put a mask on. And that's something I would like to see adopted here moving forward. And I know moving forward, that's something I'll be doing in the future. But again, you're right. It's not just a cold anymore. And I think a lot of people with regards to work and sick days. I don't know how many times I used to go into work sick as a dog because there's this guilt that comes with it. Do you think that we as not only a province but as a country can get over the politicized masks and kind of adopt what Asia has done with regards to masks moving forward post-pandemic? Yeah, I, I will tell you I was in J Japan uh, a year and a half ago. I guess it was what February 2019. And that was the first thing that struck my husband and I, we got off the airport, or got off the airplane and, oh, everybody's wearing masks. Very quickly, we got past that, right? And that's why I find this whole bit that goes on, particularly with South Border, the debate about, I don't want to wear a mask anymore. Can we not just accept it as something that is a really good public health measure? I, 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 don't, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. 
The other thing that I think is going to happen is that we figured out because here's you and I speaking from our homes, right? Everybody's figured out how to work at home. I, 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 you know, I'm hoping, you know, that there will be a lot of hybrid models of working. If somebody gets sick and they really, if they have a little tickle in their throat and they're afraid they're going to spread something, they can set up their computer in their house and they can, they can work, right? If you don't want to take a sick day, if you're not sick enough for that, there's going to be options for us to be able to, to continue to be productive while monitoring symptoms, just like we've done with COVID-19 all the way through. And I think that's going to be the same for any cold or stomach flu or whatever it's going to be. Something I want to touch on too, and I will, I will say I was a little terrified. Again, I don't have any school age children, but they kind of freak me out right now, knowing that they are unprotected. And like you said, what we've seen in Lucan is scary for lack of a better word. Um, I, I just, I, I'm concerned the numbers that they were projecting back in August were in the six to seven thousands. They were saying that we could see once kids went back to school. Now the numbers have been kind of status quo. We've been seeing high three hundreds, low four hundreds, and this has been going on for weeks. We got through back to school. We got through Thanksgiving. Do we think that everything's going to stay kind of as it is until these kids get vaxxed because we know it's coming. And I know, like you said, it's going to be a hot topic amongst parents. Do they, don't they, is it going to be mandated? Um, do you think that we are going to see a spike leading into winter and especially around Christmas, New Year's, because a lot of people are kind of going back to regular life. Yeah. Again, hope so. <laughs> yeah. well, the problem is though, like we were really blessed this fall. Like, let's be clear. I mean, I looked outside today and saw a few snowflakes and I was mad because I'm like, oh, we've had such a great bit of weather and it's had us all outside. And when we're outside, virus doesn't transmit, right? We, we, don't, we don't have the transmission rates. Will we see? Like, this is where we're really going to figure out how sturdy these vaccinations are, right? And I think over the next month or so, because we're going to start having Christmas parties. We're all going to watch the night's games and our kids' hockey games and kids' basketball games. We're all going indoors and we're going to our yoga classes and we're doing all those things. So if, and I'm confident, if the vaccines are as robust as we say they are, we should be okay. We should be fine. But we haven't given it the ultimate test yet. And I think that test happens over the next four or five weeks. And we are not going to start vaccinating kids until the first week, uh, at least the first week of de December. So, and once that starts, Dr. Mackey's already said how it's going to happen here in Middlesex, London. They're going to try to do as many as they can for two weeks. There's 35,000 kids in Middlesex, London that are eligible. First vax, first two weeks of December. Second vax, first two weeks of, of, of January. And have them done and then do mobile clinics. So we should be able to get through that fairly quickly. It's just, we got to get to that point and make sure not that these kids don't get sick. We saw the same thing at, at Lord Eldon, right? And what happens is, I wrote a column about this. The province came out and said, we're finally going to use those rapid tests that we've had kind of stacked away. That to keep schools open, like what we're doing now is if, if, if your child is sick, they've got, a, they've got a quarantine, as does the classroom. If that kid has a sibling, that class has to quarantine. And if there's another sibling, that class has to quarantine. Until all of a sudden you've got so many kids that are, are, are direct or indirect contacts that you have no option but to close up the school, right? So now they're gonna rapid test kids in classes and, and do that over 10 days after there is a, there, there is a, a particularly for asymptomatic kids. And that way maybe they can stay in class. That should have started in September as far as I'm concerned, but you know what? We're hanging in, <laughs> we're still hanging in here and it, we're still, you know, we're still not seeing these dreaded fourth wave spikes that we thought we were gonna see. Now, you know, COVID could spoil the party and mutate and we might be back to square one. I'm hoping not, right? But we'll see, right? We'll see. Better late than never, I guess. Um, just quickly, because we are running out of time. I do just want to touch on what's happening with the hospitals right now, because I know in Ontario, we have taken patients from Saskatchewan and Ontario, all things considered, is doing very well considering, um, and especially compared to some of our Western provinces with daily caseloads. Um, what is the hospital looking like right now with regards to capacity and wait times for people who are going in with issues not COVID related? 
Well, as far as I know, at this point, I mean, I mean, and I can only speak to what Dr. Dukalo says at the at, at the briefings. Monday looked pretty good. I, you know, I, I think that if we are taking patients that from Saskatchewan, and we have the capacity for that, by all means, let's take them. Number one, because we're all in this together. But also, if if we've been able to demonstrate and practice, you know, a, a safer uh, you know, community as far as, as healthcare. I mean, that opens up the doors for, for other, for other, uh, uh, surgical delays and everything else to start happening. Um, you know, at this point, I think again, mandates work, <laughs> mandates work. People feel safe to go, uh, because there are mandates at our hospitals here in London that say you gotta be vaccinated. And, you know, I, I, I have no problem. You know, I don't think I, I, I you know, I've always said, to, to, uh, to other folks, you know, a job is a, uh, is a privilege, not, not a right. And if my employer says I'm going to have to be vaccinated, I'm going to get vaccinated. They set the rules. And I, I think that they said bravo to them for doing what, what they did. I think it's going to be an interesting few weeks leading into Christmas and especially post Christmas. I also think that uh, the timing of everything with the province loosening restrictions during the cooling down months before winter really hits has also been a little interesting. And granted, I know it's been based on vaccination rates, um, but I think that's something I would have liked to have seen in the warmer months, uh, just because I know people were still very much drawn outside. Uh, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. You know, think of it last half full though. Maybe to me that says they're confident that maybe it's going to be okay. Right. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking is if you're going to if you're going to start relaxing things now. Chances are, you know, even Dr. Moore, Dr. Moore is, you know, he said yesterday, you know, you know, likely going to be boosters, but that's OK. We're still following the data and everything looks good. Now we just got to get the border stuff done, Lindsay. That's that, that's my big bugaboo right now. It's is we just got to figure out all the stuff that we're doing. But anyway, they open on Saturday just for everybody so they know the land border opens. That's so, right. And that's going to be another interesting, it, it, that's what I mean. Like it, in a sense, it does kind of feel like the pandemic is kind of coming to an end. Everything's going back to normal that we haven't seen since yeah. February of 2019. And I love the positivity from you, Jane. And I will say I am excited for my booster shot. I will absolutely be getting it as soon as possible. <laughs> Sign yes. me up. Me too. Yes. Me too. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much for your insight, Jane. It's always wonderful to catch up with you. I appreciate your time today. And I look forward to the next time we chat. Hopefully uh, it's going to be like 15 active cases in the region and kids will be vaccinated and who knows, right? Those numbers are back down below 100 today. Active that's cases, right. that's great for us. 95 that's fantastic. Active cases. Yeah, we'll take that where we can get it. But wear your mask, wash your hands, physically distance when you can take your shots. That's what I would say. You know, if we all do that, I think we may be, maybe we'd be able to sit down in person sometime. <laughs> Sage words from reporter Jane Sims. Jane, always wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, and once again, if you're enjoying these podcasts, please hit subscribe. We'll be back again next week with another edition of the LF Press podcast. Until then, stay well.